in. This trail of information means each node knows what another node knows, when they found out about it, and who they found out about it from. This allows the nodes to locally engage in a virtual voting protocol unique to Hashgraph. Without communicating with one another and consuming bandwidth, mathematically rigorous voting algorithms are used by each node to agree on the order of transactions, and so how to apply them to change the state. In order to achieve a decentralized market, we need the ability to order ultra-high transaction volumes in real time. Only Hashgraph can guarantee performance, security, and fairness for these types of distributed applications. Best thing. Hey everybody, my name is Andrew. I'm Hedera Hashcraft's social media manager and welcome back to another live stream of Forkless Cafe where you come for your weekly DLT insights. I am joined by my colleague Sharon who's taking care of the live chat. Sharon, how are you doing? Woohoo! How's everybody doing today? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yep, yeah, so we are excited to do another episode uh, with you and we are lucky enough to be joined by another community member, Roderick Ross. Uh, I'm going to quickly read off a, uh, an, an intro, um, and, uh, and uh, I'm excited to read off this intro, this, this bio for, for Roderick, because it, uh, Roderick, you have a very uh, unique background. I'm very impressed to, uh, to learn more about uh, your unique insights. And uh, I'm going to kick things off by saying I'm, I, my whole life, I've always been very envious of people with cool, unique names, because Andrew, you can't get more boring than Andrew. OK, so, uh, you know, <laughs> just just love love the name. I remember the first time I saw your name pop up. I'm like, Roderick, that's a great name. Uh, so Rod <laughs> Roderick, Roderick Ross, a.k.a. Dr. Hot it Rod. Sorry. Dr. Hot Rod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you might have I did to, you not might choose have, that name. You might, yeah. have, you might have to explain more of this background um, uh, later on here. But uh, AKA Dr. Hot Rod received his title from the legendary Paul Tilston uh, while speaking at a global business travel association conference in South Africa. His background is in chemical engineering, where his PhD in advanced process control won him the best PhD thesis at UCT in 1997. He spent time in the UK as a postdoctorate researcher at Imperial College and then as a senior consultant for process systems enterprise doing mathematical modeling and optimization of complex process systems. Uh, this led him to working for the United Technologies Research Center, where some friends mistakenly think he worked as a rocket scientist. Truth is, he actually just hung out with rocket scientists while doing research on the use of fuel cells for cars and buildings on Earth, not for providing energy and water and heat for, uh, to the inhabitants of the International Space Station. After being put on a project to revamp 40 years of air conditioning models, Rod got chills down his spine and decided it was time to move on and he headed back to London. He tried to help Imperial College launch an advanced process control startup, but the technology seemed almost a solution seeking a problem. He never quite could, uh, quite could figure out the right problem. Rod then headed back to South Africa and changed fields, resulting in eventually spending 10 years designing business travel software. Therefore, he went to Maratus. I think I'm, is that is how is that how I'm pronouncing that correctly? Maratus. Um, I'm, I'm. I'm. Therefore. Not sure. Yeah, yeah, it says, okay, sorry, I, 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 I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Therefore, he went to Maratus to help a friend set up offshore ah, software Mauritius. development business. Mauritius, Mauritius. Ah. beautiful island of Mauritius. Mauritius, you, thank you, Canary, thank you. You're in the Canary Islands now, you should pop over to Mauritius. I, I really should, shouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, while there, he uh, I'm but butchering your bio now. While there, while there, he set up his own company doing outsourced software development and consulting. Along the way, fun projects included revamping IATA's and DC business that's travel IATA, demonstrator. That's IATA, the International Air Transport Association. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you for clarifying. Uh, the biz, uh, NDT. What is NDC business travel demonstrator? <laughs> Well, NDC is a new distribution uh, capability that the airlines are trying uh, to bring in to make them more efficient in terms of booking and selling ancillary products and so on. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. And also developing chatbots for a forward thinking travel agency in Mauritius. Mauritius. Mauritius yeah. <laughs> uh, he moved to South Africa and helped travel start a leading leisure, uh, uh, a leading, excuse me, a leading leisure travel agency 
dip his, uh, their toes into the business travel space and also spend a year helping companies implement international supply chain software to streamline their trade. This is, this is uh, an incredibly diverse background you have here. He currently is a consultant helping clients implement Appian, a low code uh, solution for developing enterprise grade applications and also assists in the company as the Cape Town ambassador for Hedera Hashgraph and next generation distributed ledger technology. Uh, the hope is that this time round, he finds the right problem to solve. I love that. Yeah. The, only common, the only common thread in this unconventional journey is a passion for modeling and optimizing, automating complex processes. The underlying processes change from engineering ones to business ones, but the problem solving mindset and approach he uh, has stayed the same. Uh, you, uh, uh, my friend, have a very diverse background and I can only venture a guess what uh, eventually um, drew you towards Hedera Hashgraph, but I've been talking far too long here. I would love to actually first ask you how you first came to discover Hedera Hashgraph. Um, I think it was in October, 2017. I, I don't quite know what led me to find an article, but I saw something about like, is this the blockchain killer or something? And I read about Hashgraph and I, and to be honest, I wasn't one of those smart enough people to invest in Bitcoin 10 years ago or anything like that. But I did at that stage know a little bit about Bitcoin. And when I read about this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is incredible, okay? And so I told some of my friends who were smarter than me and they were like, well, that's very, very nice, but it kind of will be exciting when it's a public platform, you know, so chat to us then, you know. So then I kept my eyes on it and followed around and listened. And then, you know, about a year ago, Hedera came out. So then I was like, okay, Bring this, who? This, is, this is definitely going When I read about this, I was like, oh my gosh, this, thing, this is oh. incredible. Okay. And oh, so getting, I told some of my echo. friends who were smarter than me and they yeah, were like well that's very very nice but it kind of will be exciting when it's a public platform you know so I chat to us there that, but I'm hearing the echo so then i kept my right eyes now. on it and followed uh, around and listened and then you know about a year ago hedera came out so then i was like okay, bring who this is... there that we go that may have been me that may have been <laughs> me i think i had a browser open somewhere uh, oh was I that you oh, okay because there is a delay on the live stream uh, so You'd yeah so there we go Okay. okay, now I can't, I did hear your voice, like, but clearly it was a, a delay there. Yeah, so, okay, Th uh, thanks for close. Thanks for closing that down. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good, you're good. So what I'll do is I'll start uh, sharing my screen here now that we've, uh, we've, we've introduced you there and I can uh, start things off. Uh, let's see here, get back, get back on program, okay. So as always, guys, uh, we start things off with a uh, disclaimer. Um, there we go. There we go. Now it's fired up. Um, uh, so we have a weekly agenda. We start off with the industry insights. And Roderick, uh, please feel free to jump in uh, and, and offer some your, your insights if, if, uh, if, if, you, if the, the need arises, if you feel like uh, you, you have something that you would like to include. And then we'll move on to Hedera highlights, do some social scissors, and then our personal favorite, the hero of the week and uh because of the world we live in we got to include this this disclaimer as well um so i'm going to switch gears here now to to the news and oh here we go perfect okay so we're going to start things off here with this uh coin telegraph can you can you still see my screen here roderick yeah yeah we yeah. can oh perfect good stuff and, oh, and actually, sorry, a quick reminder too, that uh, for anyone who hasn't joined us on the live stream before, we have Sharon uh, uh, taking care of her live chat. If you have any comments or questions that you want to include uh, and pass over to, to any one of the three of us, uh, we'd be happy to have uh, a discussion with you as well. This live stream is all about the community and we want to put, um, uh, provide the best value that we can for you. If you have any recommendations or suggestions for future Forkless Cafes, uh, we're certainly open to any and all feedback. But uh, we're going to start off with this uh, Cointelegraph um, article about uh, IBM that's filed for a blockchain enabled web browser. Um, uh, if, if you've been following us, then you'll notice that uh, we made a big announcement last week, last Monday, uh, announcing the two newest uh, council members are IBM and Tata Communications. And so this article uh, jumped out saying that uh, examples of data that could be stored on chain, excuse me, include visited uh, websites, bookmarks, search term cookies, geolocation, and record of browser security patches, among others. Uh, so it's interesting to see 
um, such a big player like IBM that is looking to um, pursue DLT technology as a web browser. So that's, that was, we did, thought that was interesting. Did, did you actually click on the link though, where, where it talks about the patent that they filed? No, I haven't. What did I miss? Because um, you, should, you should do that if you want some bedtime reading. If you, <laughs> um, earlier this month, I don't know, somewhere in that article, they, they actually yeah. give the link to the patent application. Oh, do they? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, those things are normally really great for putting you to sleep. But, but secondly, the interesting right. thing is that the patent actually talks about a consensus algorithm. It, it doesn't once actually talk about a browser. It focuses on a consensus algorithm to solve the domain name server problem. And maybe, maybe other parts of IBM might want to chat to the part that's working with Adara on fancy consensus <laughs> algorithms. <laughs> Perhaps the HCS, the Hedera Consensus Service. Yeah, this I just clicked on it. This is where it was filed. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So that, that'd be interesting yeah, to read through exactly. Consensus. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. All right. I am going to. Uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to hang up on everybody. So I need to be careful that I don't click on that. And thanks because... so much for that, Roderick. You know, we can get some of these links to hashgraph.org. And also yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure the people in the video that are listening to the video can, can actually see some of those links. So thanks for sharing that with us. Great, great tip. Exactly. We do want to try to keep all these links uh, in, in a central place so they're easily accessible for everybody. It's part of the reason that we've uh, decided to do the live stream to um, uh, help people sort through the overload and, and influx of knowledge out there uh, that, that we all were all um, uh, probably up to our eyeballs in these days. Uh, so we also have the hard fork here. Uh, the IRS obviously won't stop until it collects all the cryptocurrency taxes owed. I'm pretty sure uh, all the tax regulators worldwide are, have this as a high priority. Uh, so this is uh, comes to no surprise for anybody that the IRS is sending out another round of letters to known cryptocurrency traders. Uh, and uh, we've, we've been beating that drum for a long time now that uh, the lack of regulatory uh, clarity is what's really hindering the, uh, the, the mass adoption of DLT technology. And uh, uh, tax implications are certainly going to uh, be mm -hmm. a part of that conversation. So, yeah. yeah. And moving on here, we also got uh, China. China is set to launch its own cryptocurrency. Uh, China is an interesting conversation all around. It seems like anytime anybody uh, reads about China, they're either one way or the other. Uh, but I found this quote interesting down here. With the announcement of Libra, governments, regulators, and central banks have had to expedite their plans and approach to digital assets. Uh, so the, uh, the overall Facebook Libra conversation seems to have um, spurred on uh, or sped up the, the adoption of some of these, these, this technology and governments around, around the world are now taking a much serious look, much more serious look at DLT. But, but, but this one's also interesting because even though it says cryptocurrency, it's actually just really talking about digital currency and mainly so that they can actually better track how cash is being exchanged between people. You know, so it's an interesting angle that... Um, that and that, that's a perfect observation that, yeah, I didn't point out. Yeah, there's, uh, uh, there's a clear definition difference between cryptocurrency and digital currency. Yeah. So they perhaps maybe could have used a more accurate... Um, title in this article. Uh, okay, yeah, this, the more, this gets your attention more, you know. So. Exactly. Yeah, it's a marketing <laughs> marketing move. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, this next CoinDesk uh, article actually really caught my eye. UK's pensions and welfare department eyes DLT for faster payments. Um, this quote definitely caught my eye because of the uh, technology that Hedera Hashgraph obviously uh, offers. As we move our payments services forward, they need to be efficient, modern, fast, scalable, flexible. Innovative yeah. and, and available 24 seven. What does that remind you of, right? Uh, so I just found this to be an interesting article that, uh, that uh, again, another example of governments worldwide, they're taking a much more serious look at DLT technology because they've recognized uh, now that there are ways to st further streamline their processes, improve um, uh, uh, or uh, improved uh, efficiencies and um, uh, reduce the, 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 the lead time or the, the lag uh, it takes mm -hmm. for people to receive their payments. So. So that's interesting. Too. And, and even nice, like a year ago, the headline would have said, I is blockchain for faster payments. You know, the fact that they're that's, now kind of embracing the, the term that's more accurate and so on. 
That's a very good point. Uh, DLT, distributed ledger technology, is very much an umbrella term that would uh, encompass blockchain, DAGs, directed exilic graph, which is the, the uh, architectural structure that uh, uh, Hedera Hashgraph deploys. Um, uh, but the overarching term would be DLT. And, you're, and I've noticed the same thing. It's an observation yeah. that uh, many of us have noticed that uh, people are, are starting to use the DLT term more often, more frequently. That's a good point. Okay, um, and moving on. Actually, before I jump into this one, uh, so if you were watching us last week or if you've been following us on social media, um, this is a, a long list of some of the uh, articles. This is just some of the articles. These, wow. are the Ameri these are just the American articles that were posted uh, of us last week because of our big announcements. Uh, I've already mentioned that uh, IBM and Tata Communications have opted in to join the governing council. And uh, these are uh, some of the links that we can make available for everybody. Uh, and these are just the American ones. There was a lot more internationally, obviously. But uh, it was exciting news. It was big news. It, uh, it, it definitely spread rapidly last week. And uh, so we wanted to start off the Hedera highlights with some of this. It, uh, it's, it's something that the team has, the Hedera team, is extremely proud of. And we're, we're uh, so grateful that, that uh, uh, IBM and Tata Communications have uh, decide to opt in and join the governing council member because it just makes our governing council yeah. model more diverse. Yeah, and also because, you know, both companies have a sort of an engineering bent as well, you know, in terms of smart cities, internet of things and so on. So the angle and the wisdom and insights that they could bring into applications for Adera would be really great. Yeah, yeah IoT, IoT is a very interesting conversation and our, we've said from day one that we want this to be the most decentralized and distributed uh, governing council in existence, representing 18 sectors, all four corners mm -hmm. of the globe, and also distributed throughout time because each council member is restricted to uh, serving no more than two consecutive three-year terms, so a maximum of six years, and then they would have to vacate that seat, another enterprise yeah. would uh, replace them. And uh, so uh, all of these measures have been carefully thought out by our co-founders and uh, put into place simply to limit uh, collusion and um, further make the, 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 main, the, the network more robust and secure uh, uh, and so that we won't have any governance headaches or problems further down the road. So yeah, we're very excited about that. <clears throat> uh, and then last week we had a guest, uh, uh, Brandon H. On uh, who makes um, uh, a lot of great videos on YouTube, and yeah, so I wanted, yeah. I wanted to share this one. He did a comparison video between Hedera uh, versus Algorand, and and he, uh, he he created a video and put it on his YouTube channel. So I highly recommend people to, uh, going to check out uh, the the monetary reset on his uh, on YouTube. He pumps out all kinds of great content. Uh, he's he's uh, he puts a lot of thought into his his, his videos. And, um, and yeah, I know the community really appreciates all the work that Brandon does. Yeah, and there was a lot of chat on, on, on the Telegram channel on Algorand last week. Um, oh, was there? I've been, I've, been a little, I've been a little out of the chat. Uh, things have been, last week, was, last week it was a little crazy with us. <laughs> yeah, so, jo Johnny, Johnny Hash uh, had to earn his cash. Uh, he, he really was... Uh, fighting the fight last week, but... Um, oh, is it? Well, it's, it's, fun. it, it's funny that you mentioned Johnny Ash because yeah. we're going to be, we're going to be circling back to that. But, but, uh, quite, but it was quite very soon. interesting because, you, you know, I mean, obviously these are two uh, very, very smart people behind both ticks. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and people were, you know, going on and on and on about the relative merits and so on. And it was interesting, but, you know, basically any technology that you can talk about for more than a minute in comparison to Hedera must be somewhat decent, right? You, you know, so, but there's much bigger questions that we want to ask be, beyond this, because most people like me, like I can't really get my head around 10 different cryptocurrencies. I've kind of intuitively settled that Hedera has kind of got the type of things I think would make for a good platform. Mm -hmm. And to now learn and invest mentally, you know, in developing applications on 10 others would just be too much effort for me, you know? So I'm sure there's lots of great stuff out there, but, you know, I'd rather know like what's the common weakness across all these texts. Like what's the real barrier for mass adoption of any of these things, as opposed to nitpicking one benefit over another one, you know? And those think, are the discussions, you know, that are also interesting. 
I think that's a very fair point. And you're right. Telegram is actually uh, the, the perfect platform to have those kinds of discussions. There's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of heated debates these days uh, about these yeah. topics. And, and it's, it's fascinating stuff because this is going to sh help shape the world that we're going to be living in in future, in, in, in future years to come. And, uh, and I, think, I think it's prudent to assume, and from, from what I gather, most people would agree that uh, it's prudent to assume that there, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be one DLT at the end of this. There, sure. There's going to be, it's going to be a, a handful, a core group of, of companies that are all going to specialize in certain areas uh, because you can look yeah. at any industry today and you're going to see that there's, you know, two, three, four companies that that's, that uh, are all extremely good at serving a particular customer and and um, dominated in a certain aspect. But uh, but I, I think it's only yeah, but, natural but, to assume the but, same will happen here. But what's cool is the Adara founders, their vision is like 100 years down the line, you know, so where some of the chat is like all about like what's going to happen after open access. What do you think the price will be like? Like who, who knows, you know, and imagine if you were into Bitcoin like 10 years ago and you kind of worried that it was now like, like 0.4 of a dollar instead of 0.2 of a dollar and you sort of got out of it because it had somehow jumped in one day, you, you know, like you got to think, what is the big picture? Is this something that is going to be around for the next 50 years? Is it going to add value in people's lives? And do I need to somehow educate myself and get involved now? Like we literally at the infancy of all of this, it's literally like the internet in the nineties kind of thing. So um, I don't think we must get too hung up about the intricacies of when open access is, or once there is open access, what the price is on the market. <laughs> you know, this is like five years time. We're going to look back and just laugh at ourselves, you know? Well, and, and on that note, I would love to ask you, what, what is your um, impression or opinion as far as uh, uh, what Hedera Hashgraph brings to the table that's unique? Um, you have a background in supply chain management. You have a, a background uh, working yeah. with, with rocket scientists. Uh, I'm, I'm curious where, yeah. where you see. Look, so, so the bit that drew me, like before I got interested in this, the, the bit that irritated me about Bitcoin, apart from the fact that I wasn't smart enough to invest 10 years ago, the bit that irritated me was the fact that it was a massive waste of computing power. Like there had to be a better way for computers to spend their time than arbitrarily guessing a nonce, you know? So that just seemed wrong. And when, when I read up about an algorithm that, that no longer let you trade off speed versus security, you know, like you just go, man, this guy's going to win a Nobel prize for this kind of thing. Right. But he's only going to win a Nobel Prize if actually at the end of the day, there's some widespread adoption and so on. And that's mm -hmm. normally going to be dictated by like 10,000 other things beyond just the raw tech. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so clearly the founders are, are super smart, but the type of people that they've associated with is impressive. I mean, every, every Adara employee that you interact with, like from yourselves to Paul Madsen or whatever, these are really great people, you know. And then when you look at the council beyond that, you, you know, there, there's a, you know, like, like attracts like kind of thing, you know. So there's just massive layers of quality, which is attractive, you, you know. And, and I think it's going to be fun to see what people do with all of this, you, you know. That's, that's a bit that I'm just trying to get my head around. You know, what are we going to do? I, I'm tinkering with my own little things and other people are doing their own things. So, yeah. That's fantastic. I really appreciate the kind words, Roderick. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it's, it's lovely to hear that kind of feedback. And uh, yeah, like attracts like the law of attraction. I'm birds of a feather flock together. I'm a big believer behind that as well. And, yeah. and we are, we are you, you nail it on the head. We are in early days. We are in early days. So if you are watching this live stream right now and you've just heard Hedera Hashgraph for the very first time. Um, we're not even yet, yet at open access, where, which is right around the corner. And uh, there's, there's, there's still plenty of time to familiarize yourself with this content and see how it's going to impact your personal life, your professional life moving forward, because we are in this is the early days uh, and there's going to be a lot happening uh, in the coming months. Yeah. And, uh, there's, and, there's and, just and even, in the, even in the community testing, like it's so cool to sort of earn your H bars and that and, you know, get some credits for testing but actually like the real value you get is if we really understood what those articles are saying you know, as with a lot more than 5h you know so. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. 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 Well, they, the team did a lot of hard work. Uh, I'm always impressed uh, by our creative department, our product department, uh, all uh, uh, everyone on the Hit Air Ashcraft team. Sometimes I got to pinch myself because we're, we're a, a, there's a there's a very uh, um, passionate and inspired um, group on this team. And uh, it's anytime uh, we've just uh, posted some some brand new pages, uh, our, our fees page, our estimator page, our yeah. um, uh, how it works page. And we're getting nothing but floods of positive feedback about that. In fact, next week, we'll probably have to highlight some more uh, information about that on Forklift Cafe. Uh, but um, yeah, I uh, really appreciate your, your kind words there, Roderick. I have one more article that we should uh, quickly discuss, and then we can move on to uh, social sizzlers. Um, so Cointelegraph had this um, article about it. This is actually a fantastic, and I'm so glad that we can provide these links for everybody. This is actually a fantastic overview article that I noticed. Um, really covers a lot of things. They talked about uh, 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 the, the meeting that Hidera Hashgraph had with David Marcus back in February 2018. Let's talk about the Governing Council. Um, and they talk about the Hidera Consensus Service, which is the, the newest native uh, feature that uh, we just rolled out. And uh, the, the quote right here that they use is the first public distributed ledger technology, DLT, to offer a consensus as a service for transactions with fair ordering, incredibly high throughput, and privacy encryption for all transactions. Because what HCS has done is taken the, the positives, the pros of a private network and the pros of a distributed, uh, mm. excuse me, public network and combine the two. So you have the decentralized trust of the public network and the privacy of a private network. And that's what HCS has, has brought us to the market for the first time. <clears throat> um, yeah, is, have you had a chance to dig into the HCS there, Roderick? Are you? Are you familiar with that? You know? No, I mean, I mean, I just understand the concept and it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm not sure if the actual API is available for us to tinker with, but um, my understanding from is from what I understand, like it's only the IBMs of the world, etc., that are playing around with it. But I didn't understand that normal developers could access it. Current. My, uh, maybe uh, Sharon can correct me if I'm wrong here, but my understanding is that yeah, that's that's coming uh, shortly. Yeah. It's 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 not yet available for developers yet. No, but uh, yeah. it's 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 also around the corner. Yeah, yeah. The team yeah, is about working a, on a about lot. a year ago, I was interested in you know because when I was in the supply chain space, obviously Hyperledger Fabric is really cool, and IBM's got all these partnerships with Maersk and so on. But at the time, uh, there were people trying to link Hyperledger to um, um, well, either to Hashgraph or Adera. And then at the time they said there were some challenges actually in the fabric code that made the portability of this uh, ordering service a little bit harder than, you know, it could have been. So obviously a lot is happening there now, you know, so it would be nice to see the fruits of it. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting to see what, what the team has, has announced with the HCS. Uh, and we obviously announced our partnership with um, Hyperledger and Chainlink and the Oracle service yeah, Chainlink. Yeah. And uh, I think, I think uh, they, they've also recognized that this ordering service uh, uh, comes into play uh, for a great number of applications that they have. Hyperledger is obviously a massive force, a massive um, yeah. uh, feature. Uh, I shouldn't say feature. It's a massive, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I think uh, what ha they say half of all the big blockchain projects out there are, used, are deploying on Hyperledger, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have the social sizzlers uh, coming up next. It looks like, it, wow, you, I saw the sunset on your side and now it's pitch dark over there. So <laughs> we didn't yeah, even show that with I, everybody. I've just, got, I've just got LEDs in the background faking a sunset, you know. But, oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right on. I swear we started this. You had a sunset going on, and now it's pitch dark. There's a whole yeah. mood thing going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, didn't, we didn't even tell everybody. Where, where are you uh, coming to us from? Ah, I'm from uh, Cape Town, South Africa. In Cape Town, um, South Africa, right on. Getting warmer on the side, and thankfully we've had a winter of rain, so we've actually got water in the dam. So, so oh, good. and oh, you guys were experiencing a bit yeah. of a drought. Okay. Yeah, a oh, year wow. ago we could have been one of the the main cities in the world well one of the large cities in the world to sort of run out of water we were kind of oh. a month or two away from it so oh wow oh, Jesus. but uh dodged that one yeah wow okay well good good news good to hear <laughs> yeah. um so uh, uh we're almost uh getting ready to wrap things up here but uh we're gonna uh, share the social sizzlers with everybody because 
last week, I'm sure this is no surprise, our highest performing tweet was the announcement of uh, IBM and Tata Communications joining the uh, DARA Council. Uh, but I also want to take a moment to highlight um, a tweet that, I, uh, that we retweeted from, which also got a lot of attention from the Crypto Oracle, uh, who is congratulating, uh, is proud to, uh, where is he? Yeah, Crypto, uh, congrats to our partners here, Chainlink and Hashgraph equals a bright future for enterprise smart contracts. This tweet actually got a, a lot of attention as well. And uh, we, we couldn't be more proud to associate ourselves with these amazing teams and projects that are all working towards the same goal, the same mission yeah. that we're all, we're all trying to get to this future where people can control their private data, where you're not going to be concerned about data breaches or conversation monitoring or any of the other headaches that people are experiencing in the internet today. Cause we, we truly believe that the internet is, is fundamentally broken and we're looking to, to solve these problems. And these are big problems to solve. It takes a lot of, yeah. a lot of uh, hardworking people to, to come to solutions for these kinds of problems. Right. So, yeah. And I will bring the slideshow back here. Those are the social sizzlers. And I want to quickly shift gears here. You mentioned Johnny Hash. I want yeah. to uh, take a moment to <laughs> congratulate Johnny Hash for being our hero of the week. Uh, you mentioned Roderick, that. Uh, Hash. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there amazing. we go. I don't know. Uh, Johnny Hash is, I think, one of the most inspiring people in the Telegram chats. He is incredibly knowledge knowledgeable. And uh, you mentioned, Roderick, that he was very busy in Telegram last week. I think he's busy in Telegram. Johnny is always very busy on Telegram, you know. He's, <laughs> so, he's yeah. really an asset. I mean, there's a couple of people. I mean, J Johnny, Johnny, and there's another guy, uh, Patrick Shonis, I think. Uh, you, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, Patrick is also and very And actually, active. actually the one Silver. thing I must say, which was super impressive, is like, one day, like, after the recent round of community testing, when I thought all the like Hedera developers would be like, you know, battling to fight bugs or whatever it is that they were doing. You know, Paul and a bunch of other guys came onto the Telegram chat and were there for like an hour just chatting, answering questions and so on. It's amazing the investment back into the community that these guys do, um, like while they're trying to, you know, do their day job and churn out all the magic, you know. But yeah, um, and, and it's hard, believe me, it's hard to keep up with Telegram because... You know, you yeah, go back and you go and like all of a sudden you have a thousand messages to read. It's, it's, like, so, it's so depressing. <laughs> I know. Like when I when I go back and there's three hundred messages or a thousand, you know, they're like, oh my god. But it's, um, it, it can be a yeah, yeah. Johnny was Johnny was very good last week. Um, there, there was a lot of chats around, uh, yeah. you know, the grand things, and he, you know, he he fought the good fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny, if you are watching live or if you're watching the recording, I want you to reach out to me over Telegram and I'm going to uh, congratulate you again and uh, make sure you get your hands on a voucher from the uh, Hedera, the shop.hedera.com, our uh, online store. Uh, uh, well, more, well deserved, not nearly enough uh, to, to show our true appreciation for you and all that you do for the community. I know you're also a a uh, big uh, contributor to hbarprice.com. You do a lot of work for them as well. Uh, and and, and hbarprice.com and Hashash, uh, we have incredible people, part of the community that does um, uh, all, provides all these resources and uh, content that uh, so many people rely on to get uh, their head grasp, just get, get uh, uh, grasp yeah. an understanding of this brand new revolutionary technology. Yeah. yeah. And oh, the sorry, nice but, thing is everybody sort of explains it slightly in their own way and you know it adds these layers of understanding onto things so. exactly yeah all right oh oh no i went too one too far there we go so i'm going back um oh can i get back here let me get back there we go a little snafu so uh we we do like to enjoy a little a little humor <laughs> a little i don't know if anybody who's watching this live stream has seen this video online but it's pretty funny uh we, we're we'll include the uh the link in our links for everybody it's a pretty it's a pretty funny like two and a half minute video and it just keeps going on and on and on this guy is so, 
he's this guy has a lot of time on his hands but i truly enjoy, enjoyed it i had a, i got a good laugh out of it are you are you um, going to play it now or or we no we don't have it queued up uh, but uh okay. but and it, it is a two and a half minute video and i'm, I'm sure people could if they really want to go check it out <laughs> they can click on one of the we'll provide the link we'll provide the link for everybody uh but it's a it's a pretty funny video <laughs> if you haven't seen it yeah I'll, I'll, i'll make sure i send it to you there too roderick um, but and, and before we wrap things up, I know you are uh, also a Hedera Hashgraph ambassador. Um, yeah. I would I would love to um, kind of pick your brain a little bit on what that process has been like for you as well, and what that experience has been like. You're uh, clearly no, no. Great. Well, I'm 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 a Slack ambassador because I, I've been <laughs> super busy with my day job. But we're going to have uh, an event next month. Um, Oh, fantastic. It's, yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping to also demonstrate some stuff I've been building on Hedera. So, you know, if uh, my developer right is listening, can you just, you know, hurry up? <laughs> right on. Oh, yeah. You're, you're laying yeah. down. Yeah, because we're doing, we're doing some chatbot stuff with, um, you know, plugging it in to Hedera for micropayments. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Okay. And for uh, anyone who's a developer watching the live stream, we do have a Discord. Uh, what we'll do is we'll include yeah. the link for our Discord chat as well. Uh, if you're more of a technically savvy person, highly recommend you join the Discord chat. Uh, you'll, you'll find some developers in the Telegram as well, but uh, Telegram tends to be everything that's un, not tech related, whereas the, the tech, technical conversation happens more in Discord. I'm not that active in Discord since I'm not a developer. But I know many people in the Hedera community um, are. Uh, we have Tim and Greg and yeah. Cooper. Cooper. Cooper's. Uh, Cooper Cooper's is. Amazing, yeah. He he's he's in both chats. He's very active. He speaks on, at events for us. In fact, I think he's speaking. Oh, Sharon, remind me. He speaks in Berlin. Yeah. Is that that's Berlin. coming up? Is that tomorrow or is that yeah, that's coming yeah, up? Yeah, this week, sometime this week. Yeah, it's coming up pretty quick. That's coming up pretty quick. I know he's spe speaking in Berlin, so, uh, and I believe it's going to be recorded as Hedera, the social media manager. I'm crossing my fingers that we'll be able to get our hands on the recording uh, because he knows his stuff too. So, yeah, Sharon, how, how are we looking in the, the live chat there? Do we have? Well, we do have some questions, and uh, Roderick, this one's actually for you. So I don't know if you have. Uh, much insight in, into the airline industry, but yeah, in terms yeah. of the airline industry, um, who do you think are some of the the kind of leaders in using DLT, or what are some of the use cases that you feel could be well, specifically cool. great? So that's a great question. I mean, the, um, like I was saying at the start, there's the International Air, Air Transport Association, IATA, who try, it's an airline body who tries to sort of make the industry more efficient and so on. And so they worked on a project um, called NDC to help the distribution of airline content, particularly um, ancillaries. These are all the extra things you buy when you go on a flight. So airlines want to push all that cool content, um, the additional things you can purchase, but the old distribution mechanisms made that quite tough for them. So IATA did a lot on that, um, but they also recently played around with something called IATA coin to streamline um, the global payments of, of air um, travel. And actually, if you watch, if you just Google IATA coin, I think IBM did the project and I think it may have been based on, well, it, I don't quite know how they did it behind the scenes, but basically, they compared the, the payments times uh, with the traditional um, processes. I mean, because there's, there's a lot of people to pay when you go on a flight. I mean, literally, I think there's 40 different stakeholders that need payments from the, the, um, the airports to the handlers to, you know, who knows. So that, that is a great application to swap out, you know, IATA coin for Hedera. I actually try to reach out to IATA, but they didn't take my call. Um, but uh, yeah, that is a big one. If somebody could just swap IATA coin and run it on Hedera, they'll be uh, very, very disruptive for the industry. Um, in terms of who the progressive airlines, look, Lufthansa has been super, um, you know, they rocked the boat a couple of years ago in terms of changing the distribution model where they charged a premium for channels that were sort of inefficient for them um, the, where there were high distribution costs. So I would guess a company like Lufthansa or other ones, you know, of that sort of mindset could definitely be interested in, in payment solutions. Um, 
I don't, I, I don't know who, if you guys are speaking to anybody, but those kind of, uh, that type of company would definitely be open to. Mm -hmm. Oh, Excellent. yeah, that's valuable. Uh, and then there was just another note, uh, a reminder that we've got the meetup in Boston coming coming up this week on the twentieth. Yes. So just a reminder. And yeah, and you have your your a couple of rock stars at that event, you, you know. So that's actually I think I, we've got to download our Periscope app or whatever and watch it live. A couple. Well, you're, Roderick, you're gonna have to fill me in here because I know hey, Paul. Man, Matt, dude, Paul there, Matt's there's, in there's Paul, there's, uh, there's uh, the hash hash info guy, Nick S. Uh, oh, Nick is, Nick is, oh, I did, I see, you just taught me something. I, I knew Paul Madsen was yeah. uh, giving a presentation, a very technical presentation, yeah. but I there's, had no I idea there, Nick I from hash hash. I think there's eight, eight people. So, oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. That's going to be quite the event. Too bad, yeah, uh, too, too bad we're not in Boston. We gotta, we're going to have to jump on a plane <laughs> and get our butts to Boston. Exactly. Yeah, it looks like eight community guests from four continents. So thanks so much, wow. Kat, for giving us that information. Yeah. The 20th Fantastic. from 6.30 to 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time. So, um, yeah, so, or Eastern, I'm not sure, but Eastern Time. So, yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, and that's going to be a pretty cool, pretty cool uh, meetup. Uh, I think those are the key things from the chat. Right on. Okay. Well, thanks so much for that, Sharon. I'll, um, what I will do here is... Oops, there we go. I can share my screen again. There's always, there's always a bit of a delay when you do this, when you go back and forth. There we go. Uh, so quick, 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 whoop. I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> totally, un totally unplugged my headset there. Uh, uh, so a quick reminder that all the links for the live stream here are gonna be in hashgraph.org. Uh, uh, in one place, uh, hashgraph.org is a community-driven uh, platform that we've created for everyone to uh, join the, dis the discussion. It could be technical, it could be non-technical. Uh, so we're trying to keep everything in one place just so that uh, it's easily accessible for everybody. Uh, join the community. Uh, don't forget to create your account on the portal and get your Hedero wallet up and running. Um, open access is right around the corner. No, I do not have a date. I know, I know that is a number one question. I do not have a date for you, but uh, there's still lots. It's like we were saying, still very early days and it's time to get your account on the main net and your uh, Hedera wallet up and running and paired and all good to go so that you are ready at open access. Uh, so like this uh, video, if you uh, like what we're doing here, or if you want us to do more of these live streams and uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestions or any guests in particular, um, uh, Roderick, can't thank you enough uh, for joining us okay. today. We really appreciate it. This, this is the whole concept for this live stream is for the community. And uh, uh, we, it's important for us to have that community representation right here. And uh, you're a very active person in the, uh, in, in, the in the various chats. I've seen you around for a long time. And so that's what prompted us. It was easy for us to reach out to you to see if you'd like to join us here. So really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Bravo, yeah. Roderick. Woo -hoo! Great having you. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Yes.